one of the main discussions in One Piece that isn't more based on the current arc is an old tale about Alabasta, one of the first big sagas, and the final confrontation, and how it doesn't age well when you see the villain's activities in Marine Ford later in the story. Yes, I am talking about the power gap between Luffy and Sir Crocodile. Now to get into this discussion, there are two points that need to be covered. Point one is Luffy's strength up until that point, and point two is the in-world reasons why Crocodile might have not have been as up to speed as he was in Marineford. So let's cover point one first. So going into Luffy's physical strength, we have to look back at his struggles, or rather his lack of struggles in East Blue. Case in point, his biggest actual struggles in East Blue were against opponents that he had trouble getting the hits to connect, not whether those hits would take them out or not. Except for the biggest one that he did defeat on that list, which is Arlong. The three I'm talking about in general are Don Krieg, Arlong, and Smoker. Now, start with Don Krieg, because he was by far the physically weakest out of the three, and honestly not a threat at all to Luffy. Honestly, his weapons and versatility were what put him on edge, at least keeping Luffy at bay. And when it came to that particular situation, he definitely had the advantage of terrain, being surrounded by water. Something that honestly doesn't come into play much in One Piece battles, when you think about it. On a land-based battle, of course, Don Creek probably would have gotten KO'd almost immediately. But that's kind of the beauty of Baratier, the fact that Despite Krieg not actually being a threat, the terrain mixed with Krieg's usage of said terrain is what kept him on edge with Luffy. But all it took was Luffy to break his armor, and he was down for the count. Moving along to Arlong, there honestly wasn't much of a struggle either, but their strength wasn't too big of a gap. And honestly, it's hard to tell who really was full-on stronger. But in the end, the only thing that Croc really had that could dance... Not Croc, Arlong. Sheesh. The only thing Arlong had that could damage Luffy was really his teeth. And he didn't get too many hits on that. He had to take out the Sawtooth Sword. That could have also decimated Luffy. But in terms of just pure strength, resilience... Luffy actually might have had an edge that entire time. In the end, he won. And it wasn't too difficult. Arlong was even in a berserker form at that point. But it's not like his smarts were what usually got him ahead. It was normally his brute strength and picking on weaklings. Because as we know, Arlong wasn't exactly the cream of the crop. But he wasn't weak either. He did survive some, de some dangerous fights in the Grand Line. He did survive the Grand Line itself. And he at least survived a fight with Kizaru. Well, he lost epically, but he survived. But in the end, on that note, Arlong wasn't that weak either. So the fact that Luffy could match up to a fishman who had survived the Grand Line, even with the handicap of having a much more powerful crew leading him, at the very least, Arlong wasn't exactly a slouch. He just didn't have much that he could do better than Luffy, aside from sharp things, honestly. And then we get to Smoker. Luffy had zero chance at that point in time, simply because he could not hit Smoker. There was no weakness for him to exploit. Without the later on power of hockey, there wasn't really much to do against Smoker. And honestly, that's kind of probably why Smoker's lost a lot of his oomph factor in recent times. But this isn't a Smoker shitting on him video, so let's get back to the point. The point is, by the time he had faced Crocodile, he honestly didn't have much of a physical challenge. For example, Mr. Three was not a physical challenge. It wasn't until his actual meetup with Croc that 
he met a person who could actually fight him back. However, that was mainly, not entirely, but mainly due to his devil fruit, being the fact that just like Smoker, Luffy could not hit him. Of course, his weaknesses are a little bit more obvious as opposed to Smoker's, so all it took was Luffy to find out that moisture would allow him to hit Crocodile. And what do you know? Their physical strength wasn't that big of a gap. Now, on the other hand, Luffy at that point, maybe he shouldn't have had that easy of a time. But then again, he didn't exactly have an easy time because even when he did have the water in their round two fight, he didn't win by any means. He still nearly got killed, and in the end, he basically fainted on his way to his third round with Crocodile. So he was by no means winning. But he also got kicked in his own blood, and that helped him really push over. And Luffy is all about willpower, so let's not ignore that story-based willpower boost. Because in the end, it's still fiction. Stuff like willpower and such, and then, you know, obviously hockey later manifests willpower, but willpower in general is kind of the crux of One Piece, even as far back before hockey was a full-on thing. So, we gotta give that boost to him. Now, as for Crocodile, who seemingly lacks hockey, he's, he's never really been fully delved into how much he knows and how much he doesn't, but there is a lot of debates that go on about whether Croc should or shouldn't have known hockey at that point. And given that he had made it to the New World, made it to the point where he could get thrashed by Whitebeard, I'd say it's a little weird as well. Especially since he knows about Awakened Devil Fruits and other such things. But nonetheless, it is what it is. So, Crocodile just focused on his Devil Fruit. And he did have a lot of mastery over least enough to make us wonder why it wasn't awakened. Maybe it is. Maybe we don't know. But no. Based off of his actual initial plan with, you know, being in a desert area to begin with, no, there was uh, not really a lot of sign of awakening. But then again, unlike hockey, which had some potential hints at being developed even remotely early in the story, Devil Fruit Awakenings did not. So that is a little bit less of a clear and cut debate than hockey even, which isn't even a clear cut to begin with. I digress. In the end, obviously he should have had a way more physical strength. If he could match physical feats with Doflamingo of all people, then he needs to have a little bit more physical strength. At least enough so that a pre-gear Luffy wouldn't be able to whoop him immediately. However, at the same time, maybe Croc's more of a glass cannon and he's more offensive than defensive. Honestly, that's some a topic for another day in terms of like full-on delving into it, especially when it comes to the Yonko. But I will give a little hint at the fact that, yeah, Croc definitely has a little bit more offensive power, and most of his clashes in Marineford was more of his attacks going straight up at people. Some of them were him bashing his hook against Mihawk or clashing with Doflamingo. Those were two attacks meeting each other rather than him trying to tank an attack. So we have to remember there is that slight difference. Of course, both are still tied to physical strength, but his endurance is probably not the stat he's in RPG terms, or D&D, whichever one works best for you, his endurance is nowhere near as mustard as his more offensive capabilities. And part of that is due to his focus on his devil fruit, especially in terms of how well he trained to be able to react to turn into sand and dodge attacks. Honestly, there is one other Logia that we know of who has a much higher rank and standing in the world than Crocodile, who honestly does show the same weaknesses despite being confirmed to know hockey and, let alone know it, but know it exists. And that's Ace, who got, well, for lack of better terms, thrashed by Blackbeard and hadn't really taken a hit in a while. That is to say, 
while they weren't on caribou's level by any means, they were a little bit complacent in terms of not getting hit in a while. Now, obviously Ace wasn't nearly as complacent, but then again, we don't know how much damage he actually got off on Blackbeard. We know Blackbeard's way stronger than most people, so let's not focus on that fight. Let's just focus on that parallel and go back to Crocodile. Being that, yeah, he definitely did not take a lot of hits. And unlike Ace, who had been on a Yonko crew and probably face a lot more powerful enemies, the main difference is that Crocodile sat behind the lines, disguised himself as the hero of Alabast, and mostly just took on small-time pirates who thought they could do exactly that. Basically just doing his job as a warlord, as a cover for his nefarious deeds, but never really leaving Alabasta and going out and doing a whole haul full-on raiding, because as far as the public knew, he didn't have an actual crew. Because we have to remember that. Sometimes we forget that about the warlords. Only some of the warlords we knew at the beginning of the series had actual crews that were named. For example, even Moria, it was a debate on whether his crew was a full-on legitimate crew. They are confirmed to be the Thriller Bark Pirates, but they weren't exactly the same as his former crew, the Gecko Pirates. And Mihawk does not have a crew. Kuma, honestly, he's really only a pirate in name only, because he never really was a pirate as far as we know. Of course, there's still a lot of gaps in his history. But I'm not going to go into those in case you guys are still a little bit behind and not at least past the time skip. So I'll try not to mention any time skip based spoilers. Probably should put that at the start of the video, but I've been going on for too long. Let's wrap this up a little bit faster. Basically, Crocodile had not been in a serious fight where he had to push his limits in an undisclosed amount of time. He's been planning ready to get Pluton at any given point. This meant he had to be behind the scenes, plotting every single move. His crew, for lack of a better term, did most of the actual heavy lifting from side to side. He just did the Bond villain thing. And to compare him to another warlord who did the same exact thing to an extent, Gecko Moria. Except unlike Moria, we don't have any canon material telling us exactly how powerful Crocodile was before Alabasta, as opposed to, say, Mori, who I actually have already mentioned a few times, he went up against Kaido. A younger, probably weaker Kaido, but Kaido nonetheless. And while he survived and his entire crew was obliterated, he still did a lot of damage, and I won't get into anything more, but he did. He went up against what would become one of the Emperors of the Sea, he survived, but he still managed to cause damage to Kaido's crew. Significant damage that it would have taken a while to recover from. That is an actually decent feat. Crocodile has had no such feat. In fact, we don't even know how bad his thrashing at Whitebeard's hand was in comparison to Moria's. Like, at all. Of course, we haven't actually seen either of those clashes, but we know that neither Warlord was the same afterwards. Both of them became complacent, and instead of gaining power through their own means, their own bodies, and their own physical strengths, they focused on using a third party to do so. Moria with oars, which honestly, when you think about it, is definitely not the best plan, especially when the man that crushed him has... Uh, okay, I guess mild spoilers has like 10 orzes. Maybe more, maybe less. I'm not gonna go into details. But yeah, he has a lot of ors level subordinates. So that probably wasn't the best plan. However, Crocodile's plan to use Pluton, that's a much better plan. However, because of that, he got complacent. He had not been in a fight in a while. He hadn't been on his A game in a while. In fact, you can kind of tell it when he started taking Luffy more seriously. Luffy was on the ropes at some points, but at that point, Luffy already had his story-based willpower boost, so they were more or less even. 
So rather than saying that Crocodile shouldn't have been able to have been taken out by a pre-gear pre Luffy, why does that... Mm. Pre-gear Luffy should not have beaten Crocodile on a basic note. However, pre-gear's Luffy wasn't ever actually weak, and Crocodile was way out of practice. Put those two together, and you got a lot more of an even playing ground. Not the most even, but not as nearly as big of a gap as we previously thought it was. And also, a video that has gone on way longer than I thought it would. I believe that is every single thing that I had to say on this matter. If you guys want to discuss more, please let me know your feelings on this in the comments below. And please share this with other One Piece fans that you might think have an idea on this. And if there are any other fellow YouTubers watching this, I want to get your thoughts on this as well. Maybe have a more in-depth discussion. And honestly, I want to reach out to other small YouTubers in the community. And hopefully we can have some more discussions on these type of things as a community. Because my ideas have honestly come over a long time of just taking little bits and pieces of what I've learned from others. So, that's just how you grow as a fan. Thank you guys for listening this far in. Thank you for well, liking the video if you have already at this point, or disliking it. And like I said, please tell me your thoughts in the comments below. I want to hear, I want to have a discussion with you. So, I have been Smalls. This has been another One Piece video on Black Knight anime and manga. Hopefully I'll see you guys next time. In fact, if you guys like any type of One Piece content of any kind, I will be streaming One Piece Pirate Warriors 4 on twitch.tv slash smalls94bk. Mostly Sunday mornings around 9 or 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Might have to do it 8 tomorrow after this video is released. Just because I have some things I might need to do a little later. They're just short streams, one story mission each, just a nice, chill conversation stream. Once again, this video has gone on way too long. Peace. Stay safe.